What's up? Good morning, guys. It is about 7.30 on Friday morning on the way to work. I needed to do my video a little bit differently this morning. Um, one of my co-employees is retiring this week, so they're having a um, kind of a retirement party for him during my lunch break. And as you know, I'm just a guy on my lunch break. So if they take away half my lunch break, that takes away um, the time that I have to usually post to my YouTube channel. So speaking of my YouTube channel, I uh, just wanted to clarify a couple of things. And uh, I do listen to you guys, and I got a couple of people say, hey, man, we don't really care about fighting. You know, most of the people that subscribe to this channel don't give a shit about MMA, don't give a shit about fighting. Um, and it's not that I didn't know that. Um, but it's just such an important part of my life. And to be completely transparent, to com be completely honest, which is what I am on here, um, I would attribute martial arts and the fact that I train in them um, and the fact that I challenge myself in my life in that way as a very large contributing factor as to why I've been able to come off of Kratom and why I've always been able to curtail my drug use because putting on boxing gloves and putting on leg pads, putting on a cup and putting in a mouthpiece and then standing in front of another man who you know is going to try to throw punches and kicks at you um, sparks some little fear inside you that when you do it, and after you do it, and after you overcome that, you feel stronger. You feel like you're ready to um, upscale, and you're really ready to accept and meet bigger challenges in your life. So if anybody wonders how MMA and fighting relates to Kratom use, well, for me, it does a lot. A lot. Um, with that said, of course everybody's not into MMA, and I do listen to you guys, so I will tone back my MMA discussion, uh, my training sessions with my son. I'll tone all that stuff back because I do want to give everybody what they want. And I want to give, you know, everyone who's taking the time to hit that subscribe button, the folks who take the time to, you know, uh, come back and are reoccurring uh, or recurring listeners to my channel. If it's Kratom you want to hear about, Kratom use, Kratom tapering, coming off of Kratom, uh, being able to control your Kratom use, if those are the type of things that you guys are tuning back in for, that's what I'll give you. I'm the first to admit that, after all, I'm just a guy on my lunch break. I'm a very busy person. I have a three-month-old baby at home. Most of you all know this already. A 17-year-old wife. I work eight to five. I also exercise. I do the kickboxing. I do so. I don't. I'm not the type of person that has a lot of time to sit around and plan a show for you guys. Um, for whatever reason, still have almost 400 subscribers and. A lot of those folks are tuning back in. Um, it's one of those things, when I started this channel, I kind of just started it for me. Um, it's my own accountability mirror to get my Kratom use under control. And uh, and I wasn't really sure why people kept coming back and listening. You know, I wasn't really sure. So sometimes it's hard to know um, who my audience really is, what my audience really is, and why um, the people who are returning and listening are returning and listening to the point where I've even had some people say, you just have a great voice to listen to. And we live in this internet age where people just want someone to entertain them. People just want something to listen to. And if I have that type of voice that you find soothing, and plus, you know, my videos are 30 minutes or more, so it's one of those things where people can binge it, they can listen to it while they're doing other things, while they're exercising, while they're at work, they put their earbud in, whatever it is, uh, whatever your reason is. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to know, and then sometimes without doing specific research on certain topics um, for lack of time on, on my part, a lot of times, you know, it's hard to fill a 30-minute slot with just, well, still not taking Kratom, guys. All right, see you later.
you know, <laughs> all my videos will be 30 seconds. I mean, you know, I haven't taken any Kratom since Monday. It's Friday now. Uh, so I've, you know, gone another, what, three, four days. This is my, well, working on my fourth day now without Kratom. But that's not been without a long process of uh, going completely off of it for 27 days. Before I went completely off of it, uh, I went through a taper process that lasted me. Well, a taper process down from about 15 grams that lasted me, I guess, about three weeks. Something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, again, you know, all of this is off the top of the dome. You know, and, and uh, folks have certain aspects of it they don't want to listen to. Like, you know, I get that. Um, I actually had one guy, which this actually pissed me off a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Who really cares about your son? And I was thinking, hmm, who cares about my son? That's a good question. Me. <laughs> but anyway, I know what he meant. And in the same comment, he said, I love this channel. This is one of the best channels. This guy should have thousands of followers. I'm just saying, you know, people don't care about the fighting, the MMA and stuff. So, uh, point taken. Um, I'm not trying to drag anyone through the coals. I don't want to be dragged through the coals. I am, after all, just a guy on my lunch break. I don't necessarily prepare for this. Um, I just, I come in here. I talk to you guys. I do it with complete transparency, complete blatancy, complete honesty. You guys hear all of my ups. You hear all of my downs. You hear all of my confidences. You hear all of my um, insecurities regarding, you know, Kratom use coming off of it, uh, whether I'm continuing to go off of you. You've seen me on the fence, then you've seen me off the fence. Listen, that's what it is, guys. That's what it is. I'm, I'm allowing you into the mind of someone who has used substances for all of their lives. And, you know, I may not be as bad as some people, and I'm certainly a person who's functioning under it. And I've always been a person that more, more so has just been my own doctor, right? Dosing on stuff, you know, just on a regular basis. Never went super overboard uh, with anything. Well, not, not since pills back in my 20s. Since then, um, I've always just kind of been a functional um you know, drug user, um, not as bad as some, maybe worse than others, and, uh, but, you know, and, and, and I had someone mention that in a comment, too, first you said this, then first you said that, and then first you went into this, hey, <laughs> yeah, welcome to the mind of a drug user, you know, um, if, if you're, if you're looking for a channel where someone has one singular pinpoint focus, by example, that being long-term recovery, complete abstinence. Um, you need to go to a channel that, you know, is promoted by like an NA group or an AA group or adheres to those standards that you find in those programs. I'm not that guy. I'll never be that guy. Um, I feel like I can get to where I want to be with my substance use without doing all that. Now, there are things that I take from those programs and make my own, like the taking accountability, taking inventory of your life, making amends for things that have gone wrong in your life or people that you've done wrong. Um, I do all those things and I take those things into account and I have taken those things into account previously in my life. Uh, so I don't just throw all those things out the window. But as far as going and being accountable for, you know, I, I've been to those meetings before. And what I saw when I went to those meetings when I was a young man was a bunch of miserable, freaking, complaining, negative people who couldn't wait until they got a 10-minute break so they could go outside and smoke cigarettes and drink their other monster energy drink that they got. And... I met people in there who weren't even smokers prior to quitting. They quit some 
strong drug. And yeah, good job. They're not doing that drug anymore. But now they've picked up smoking. And now they've picked up drinking four Monster Energy drinks per day. That's what I saw when I went to NA and AA. And what I saw was a bunch of people who were trading drugs uh, for other drugs, for cigarettes, and overabundance of caffeine. And, and then, you know, uh, staying off of the substances to have the people and the group to fill that spot. I don't need that shit. Don't need it. Not saying some people don't. And I'm not saying that everybody in that sort of recovery program smokes cigarettes and drinks monsters either. I'm not saying that either. Um, but I saw a lot of that stuff that when I looked around, I was just like, bro, I don't, you know, I don't need this. If that's what NA is and that's what AA is, you know, I can get down with the steps in the book and the things that it has you do on a personal level with your, you know, personal journal, your personal diary, the steps that you take uh, to get past your um, addiction, um, to deal with the shame and guilt that you might feel for things that you've done during your addiction. I can get down with all that stuff. But as far as going to the meetings and standing around with a bunch of people who, uh, you know, just seem like their life is so much worse now that they're not using, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, that was my experience with it. And, and, and added to that, and I've said this a million times on here, I don't have time to go to NA. I don't have time to go to AA. If I went to NA and AA four, five, six days a week, I would never see my freaking family. And I'm not, I'm not sacrificing that. I'm not sacri sacrificing time with my three month old and the time with my 17 year old who for the first, you know, 14 years of his life did not even live with me most of his life. He was in Spain with his mom and his stepfather. He lived abroad for about 15 years. Um, you know, I just, I'll never do that. And, and I hold true to that on here. Uh, I'm not speaking out against those programs and I think it's necessary for some people, but for me, got to find another way, got to find another way. And, uh, and it just is what it is. But, um, I have a Kratom taper playlist. If you're tuning on to the channel because you uh, are interested in coming off of Kratom and uh, you're, I, I get a lot of comments from people who are stuck and, and feel like they're kind of in a rut with Kratom. They've gotten into that um, relationship with Kratom where they've been taking it every day um, relentlessly, kind of, you know, and, and Kratom, listen, Kratom is one of those things where if you can control it and you only take it every so often and you're putting, you know, a few days, if not a week, you know, at least several days in between each time you use it and you're able to go two, three, four, five days, not use it, and then maybe use it for a couple of days, like on the weekend, you know, just to kind of relax, unwind, have like a mood lift. If you're able to do that, then when the week comes back around, you set yourself a schedule where you're not using it again for several days, and then you use it some again for a day or two, and then you stop. If you're able to do that, Kratom will not kick you in the teeth like it does when you take it every day, multiple times per day. And I know because I've been there, and you guys know because you've been there, and you leave comments all the time where I've taken this much every day, I've been doing it for this many years, and every time I try to stop, the withdrawals are just deplorable. They're absolutely horrible. It's hellish. I mean, I've heard all kinds of descriptive words describing what Kratom withdrawal is like. Um, and I'm not going to put it up there with heroin and fentanyl and stuff like that. But if you were taking a large amount of it on a regular basis for a long time, you absolutely have built up a tolerance for it. And coming off of it sucks. It sucks. And anybody who tries to tell you different is either not human or they're just in denial and they don't want to admit it to themselves or to anybody else, okay? So that's why I'm here. That's pretty much what the channel's all about. Uh, it's been suggested to me that I just need to be, um, I need some clarification about what my channel is. Um, 
my channel is about curtailing your kratom use if you are a person that you see it in your best interest to come completely off of it and not mess with it anymore my channel talks all about tapering the tapering process how to go about the tapering process going you know every two three four days whatever you're comfortable with knocking it down by about a half gram making sure you're exercising making sure you're eating healthy making sure you're taking vitamins making sure you're drinking a bunch of water making sure that you're staying busy staying engaged so that you're not concentrating on you know the lessening of your mood a little bit every day because you're going to experience some of that when you start to taper you know you've been pounding your dopamine receptors with this excess of dopamine by taking this chemical of kratom all this time right and then when you go to stop or you lessen that use your body it takes your body time to adjust to that lesser amount of kratom so you feel this like you have this lesser amount of dopamine in your system which gives you this kind of lower mood so now you feel good and uppity and uplifted and energetic on the kratom but then when you start to come off of it you start getting some of the opposite effect you're getting lower mood you're getting less energy you know you're getting like you can't call it depression because it's not clinical it's something that you've uh, self-inflicted and it's temporary but you will even start to kind of feel down like oh man blah 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 and then there's also physical symptoms associated with it people get diarrhea people get insomnia insomnia is one of the worst they have restless legs at night where they're this hypertrophy with their muscles where they tense up and they can't you know seem to keep still people experience things like that and then a lot of times once these uh if you if you either do a cold turkey if you're not ready mentally a lot of people can't take that shit you know a lot of people just aren't ready for that and then they end up going back up you know increasing their dose again just to get away from the withdrawals that they're experiencing right and uh and a lot of times people never make it through a withdrawal never come completely off of it just because of the withdrawals themselves the the negative symptoms of the withdrawals so uh, I have a Kratom Taper playlist where I talk about how I did that, how much I was going down each day, how I was feeling um, each day. I outline all of that um, and to the point where I came completely off of it. All right. Now, with the exception of about a three or four day period uh, when I went kind of on a mini vacation with my son to Boston, UFC, uh, took a road trip with him, um, I took some Kratom those days while I was gone I was completely honest about that transparent about that I planned to do that and I did it some people didn't like it um, and and you know I also had someone say if you be more you know uh, if you if you have more clarity about what your channel is about and stuff you wouldn't see a decrease in followers there's been one time that I saw a decrease in followers and that lasted for about a day and a half and that was when I told my listeners that when I went to the UFC, I was going to use some Kratom, and that if you, and I had a lot of people, you know, there was an overwhelming response, and not everyone, a lot of people were like, hey man, it's cool, you've done really well, nothing wrong with taking it on a special occasion, but then I had a decent amount of people, no, don't do it, I would say wait, don't do it, you, you, you haven't given yourself time, you know, I had a lot of response, a lot of those responses as well. And so I left a couple of response videos saying, hey, if you thought I was going to do long-term recovery, 100% abstinence and was never going to take it again, you got the wrong channel because I never planned on doing that. Um, I, I was using this channel as my accountability mirror to get myself off of it, reset my tolerance to a point of where I was not physically dependent. Were there some times where I was toying with, you know, trying to stay off of it permanently? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But I decided against that. Maybe it's because I'm addicted to it. Maybe it's just because I wanna live my life the way I wanna live my life. There's a little bit of both of that mixed in there for me, to be honest. And, uh, and I told people, hey, if you thought I was doing 100% abstinence, long-term recovery you need to go to na or na 
not just the guy on his lunch break. And if, and if you have an issue with that or if you feel like that's going to cause you to stumble or could cause you to stumble in your own road of recovery, you're welcome to unsubscribe. And sure enough, I had, I think, a total, over a day and a half, I had a total of about six people to unsubscribe to the channel. And I saw it ticking down. I was like, well, you know, my fault for saying that to them. And, uh, and, but you know what? I've gained those back plus about 10 more since then. So the decrease in followers, not a big deal. It was temporary. The channel's still going up, you know, pretty well for just a guy on his lunch break who doesn't even do thumbnails. I let, I, I let YouTube choose the thumbnails, right? And it's always something funny, me going like this or, you know, quotes is a really big one. Um, I never knew how much I used quotes until I started seeing the thumbnails on these YouTube channels. But, um, anyway, uh, I'm not going to be able to leave a video for the, for the rest of the remainder of the day, you guys. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and leave my video this morning. Uh, first thing on the way to work, uh, kind of go ahead and get one out there. I appreciate all you guys who have subscribed and are still listening. Um, and I do appreciate... Um, the constructive criticism. If there's one thing that I try to pride myself in is when I read stuff like that, you know, a lot of humans, you know, they see something like that and the first thing that pops in their in their brain is they have a tendency to kind of be butthurt. Like, well, well, fuck you, man. You know, and I'm, not, I'm, no, I'm no different. I'm not going to lie. I mean, some of the stuff I read, I'm like, well, damn. You didn't have to say it like that. But why would you really have to tell me that? You know, but at the same time, I always try to be the type of person um, that is in alignment with the kind of advice that I would give my own children, all right? And I tell my own son, my son, this all the time. Be accountable for your own actions. You know, if you do something wrong or if somebody who's wiser, who makes some good points to you, and is trying to help you, gives you some constructive advice or cons some constructive uh, feedback or criticism, you know, don't be the type of person that is not accountable for that and doesn't listen to that and throws that out the window or puts up blinders or uh, puts up a blocker to where you can't learn from other people. You can learn something from anyone in this world, anyone. Even if you are the older, wiser person, you can learn something from anyone. And I do, on a regular basis. And I try to be that type of person. So I'm appreciative of the people that gave me the feedback, even though some of it's kind of like, hey, you probably could have worded that a little differently. But you know, it, as long as it comes from a place of uh, love and encouragement and that you want the best for me, that's the biggest concern for me. Um, and, and, you know, I'm the type of person that I can handle the constructive criticism and I do listen. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, probably won't be back with any other videos today. If I do get a couple of free moments, um, you know, like I said, we're having a retirement, retirement party for a gentleman today. If I get an hour long lunch break. So if that only lasts 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and I have a few extra minutes, I might jump on and do a quick, uh, quick short video with you guys I'm not sure but either way um, I guess that's it uh, yeah that's it all right love you guys hope you guys have a great weekend uh, watch my kratom taper playlist it is doable had somebody ask me about the physical withdrawals how bad they are really uh, they use that wording really well, to be completely honest, they're really not that bad if you do like a slow taper and if you stay focused and you stick with it and you don't go back on what you said you were planning to do in terms of, you know, tapering down your uh, your use and your dosages. And as I say all the time, that has to be coupled with other things like eating healthy, lots of fruits and vegetables, taking some vitamins, drinking a bunch of water, not being sedentary, making sure that you're exercising and challenging yourself some, um, making sure that you're staying busy and engaged in other things so you're not just sitting constantly 
focusing on focusing on and concentrating on you know how bad you feel because that I'm mean, gonna be completely honest there's gonna be some times where you're not gonna feel quite up to par because Kratom has been doing that for you and now your body has readjusted to a different baseline based on how much Kratom you've been giving it so now without the Kratom your body kind of feels like shit right and so when you start to lessen your amount of it you'll find that your baseline whereas before you started taking Kratom it was up here well now your baseline is like somewhere down here a little bit so you kind of feel a little shitty uh, because of your body readjusting to that large amount of Kratom you've been giving it but that's a temporary condition it's a temporary condition just want you guys to know that so anyway love you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. All right, peace.